Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Figured I'd take you on a little walk with me as I share some Torah to prepare you for this week's Parsha. And I feel somehow that this gorgeous nature behind me is going to somehow help illustrate what I'm trying to share with you. Because in this week's Torah reading, when God gives the Torah to the Jewish people, and the Torah very famously tells us, Vayamdut betachti tahar, that the Jewish people, when they received the Torah at Har Sinai, they stood underneath the mountain. Now we take every word and every letter in the Torah seriously. So what does the Torah mean when it says that they stood underneath the mountain? You can't stand underneath the mountain. You can stand at the foot of the mountain. That's what a lot of the English translations say. But tachtit really means underneath. And the rabbis explain that this is because God took the mountain, took Har Sinai, and held it over the Jewish people's heads and said, accept my Torah or else. Now that's a very strange rabbinic teaching to explain this, you know, standing underneath the mountain because we know from the Torah itself that our ancestors accepted the Torah willingly, right? Nasev and Nishma, the Jewish people said to God, when, they, when God said, would you like my Torah? They said, we will do it and we will look into it afterwards. They willingly and enthusiastically accepted the Torah. So what is this medrash? What is this rabbinic teaching that the Jewish people stood underneath the mountain because God was threatening them with, with dropping the mountain on their heads if they didn't accept the Torah? Which is it? Did our ancestors willingly accept the Torah or were they forced into this? And the answer I heard from my teacher, Rabbi Joseph Grimblad of blessed memory. He said, just think about it for a minute. Yeah, of course the Torah says that we accepted the Torah willingly, but, and we had free will, of course, a very important principle in Jewish tradition, but think about the nature of accepting the Torah at that time. Was it really done purely on free will? If you were a slave, your father was a slave, and all of the Jewish people were enslaved in Egypt for so long, and then this God took you out, and he split the Red Sea, and he performed all of these miracles, and the ten plagues, and then God came to you and said, hey, would you like my Torah? What would you say? You say, no, let me think about it. Of course you would accept the Torah after what God did for the Jewish people. So in a sense, when they accepted the Torah, they accepted it freely, but it was, a comp- it was sort of a compromised free will because of all of the great miracles that they had seen, of everything that God had done for them. God was so in their face. He was so obvious. And that was the idea of accepting the Torah when God was really there. Real ideal in life, though, is can we, you and I, accept the Torah when God isn't so manifest, when God is a little more hidden, when we have to find God in nature? Look at this. This is just gorgeous where I'm walking. And Hashem is there. You need to look for Him, though, because He's not calling out and revealing the Ten Commandments. And God is not splitting any seas for us. And the Nile isn't turning into blood. And we're not seeing obvious expressions of God. And that's why there's so much doubt, skepticism, um, agnostics and atheists who will deny there's a God because until God comes and says, here I am, we will always have doubters and skeptics. But we, the Jewish people, who brought God to the world, we have to demonstrate that even though Hashem is not revealing Himself in seas splitting and mana falling from the heavens, He is still here. And one way to see Him is in this beautiful nature in these trees, in the snow that's falling. Okay, there's no man, but we have snow. What do you do when you see the snow fall? Does that inspire us? And does that cause us to ponder and to think that there in fact is a God, even if he can't always be seen so overtly like our ancestors did? And therefore, my friends, you and I have the opportunity to accept the Torah in a sense on a higher level than our ancestors did. We can accept the Torah, not when God is so revealed, but when he is hidden. And in doing so, we reveal God in the world and we accomplish our purpose in our mission to bring Hashem to the world and to existence when he's more hidden. Shabbat Shalom.